Welcome back to the workshop everybody. So glad you could be with me today. Part two of no jointer, no problem. So what did I do? Well, I resawed that piece of three quarter inch that I had and made two quarter inch cheeks and glued them on. Here's a tip. When you're gluing them on, make sure you have a flat surface to work off of that's protected from glue and you use straight, thick clamping calls because you want even clamp pressure on both sides so that you get good tight glue joint the whole length. I had two of these. And probably about nine clamps I think. So, setting this up is the same, like I mentioned, as any other Stanley plane, blade and chip breaker, lever cap, locker down, turn it over, sight down it, and see what kind of exposure you got. Wow, that's actually pretty darn good. Maybe a little tap tap. So does it work? That's pretty thick. Let's see if we can lighten that a little bit. Still a little thick. Tap. Still just a little thick. Ah, now we're a little light. Tap, tap. You don't get the same fine adjustment like you do on a wooden wedge plane. That's not too bad. But obviously it works. Isn't that something? Check for flatness. Oh, it's beautiful. What do I have? Eight, nine dollars, ten dollars worth of materials? A little bit of time one afternoon, a little bit of time one morning. There's a little thinner. Ah, that's nice. So, you now have no excuse whatsoever to make any size plane you need without buying another plane. You need a short plane? Need a smoother? Have a jack? No problem. Make yourself a smoother. You have a number three with a little narrower blade? You make yourself a nice little smoother. Now here's something, and people don't talk about this. This is 45 degree bed, but if I was making a little smoother, I'd bring that up to 55 or 60. That would be a high angle frog. Your bed would be high angle bed. You'll be able to plane all sorts of cranky woods. Now, I've been giving you all the pros. How about some cons? Okay, con number one. It's softwood, relatively speaking. The sapwood is down, which is softer than the heartwood, but it's actually a better wearing wood than the heartwood. Okay? Con number two, 
I only have a quarter inch cheek here. But I'm not putting any stresses on it. There's no cross pin, there's no wedge. So I think this will be just fine as what we call a makeshift or temporary tool. Con number three. I probably wouldn't go and build a tulip poplar plane and expect long lasting results as far as wear if I'm going to attack white oak all the time or hickory or hard white ash, rosewood or any of these others. No, I'm not going to. However, if all I'm doing is one board, that's all I need it for is one board, one project, maybe half a dozen boards. I might have to touch it up a little bit as far as flatness. But I would not expect this plane to last a generation. So, pine, basswood, aspen, more tulip poplar, even cherry would be okay. Walnut, straight, clear, softer walnut, not gnarly, knotty stuff. And the more you use it, the more the sole gets burnished. I've got a fairly tight mouth, but not super tight. Because I'm not going to get super tight shavings on this type of a plane. It's a jointer. So, if it gets a little noisy here, we're right in the middle of a summertime storm. There you go. So it's sort of interesting how straight the shavings are. I'm not sure if that's because of my wear bar being vertical or if it's just luck of the draw with the woods. I'm not getting any curls. I don't have a problem with that. Alright, so I talked to you about when you're building a plane, keeping your calls on here to keep it straight, keeping it down on a flat surface to keep it straight in this direction, and then once the glue cooks, you come out, you plane your surfaces top and bottom, and when you're doing the bottom, use the best straight edge that you have and check, check for length, one side, back side, then crisscross it a little bit. Go from corner to corner, all right? And then down the middle. When all of those are within a, let's say a thousandth, okay? Maybe you might see a little light here and there. Then put on a pair of winding sticks and check for twist. Make your minor adjustments as needed, and you're good to go. After that, I trim to length. I block plane the ends, put a little chamfer on it, took a chisel, knocked these corners off so it doesn't hurt my hand, and that's it. I'm done. I'll probably let it dry a little bit, because like I say, we're right in the middle of a monsoon here in Pennsylvania. But I'll let it dry a little bit. Maybe give it a light polishing with a smoothing plane and give it a coat of uh, something, probably shellac. Just to stop, to slow down moisture migration so it doesn't move. But this was a really good stable piece of wood. You have a jack plane? You have a smoother, you can make a joiner. Look at that. A screw and a block of wood. A couple hours one day, a couple hours the other, done. Head out to your shop. Make some shavings. Walter out.